G'day guys, how you going? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at the Logitech G935 wireless headphones. I've been wanting to test these now for quite some time as I'm a big fan of wireless technology. These are a wireless 7.1 surround sound headphone with built-in microphone. And of course they've got that RGB as well. So these go for about $250 here in Australia. I'm gonna let you know what I think of them. We're gonna do a microphone test. So if you found this video helpful, hit the like button, get subscribed and let's begin. All right, so before I give you my conclusion and tell you whether or not you should go out and spend your money and buy these headphones or maybe ask for them for Christmas, let's go through some of the technical specifications so that way you know what you're getting for the money. So as previously mentioned, these are a wireless pair of headphones. They operate on the 2.4 gigahertz spectrum and they come included with a wireless USB receiver in the box. Also in the box, you get a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, uh, sorry, 3.5 millimeter headphone cable, which is 1.5 meters in length, and then a two meter braided USB, uh, micro USB cable for recharging these headphones. The battery life on this particular model, they say you get about 12 hours of battery with the lighting turned off, and then you get about eight hours of battery with the lighting turned on. Now on the topic of lighting, you can control the lighting elements using the Logitech G Hub software that is downloadable from uh, the Logitech website. So it's up to entirely what uh, sort of patterns or what sort of colors you want to put on the headphones on the lighting um, but you can turn it off if you just want to get the maximum battery life out of these headphones. The drivers on each of the ear cups are 50 millimeters in size, so I believe that's a bit of an upgrade. Normally they're usually sticking around that 40 millimeter mark, but with these headphones they've gone up to 50 millimeters. The ear cups, I guess, are I guess you can swivel them so you can get them out of the way when you're not wearing them, but you can also adjust um, the size of the headphones just to make it as comfortable as possible for yourself. The ear cups, they sort of come with a PU leather, so they are soft and I guess quite comfortable from my testing at least anyway. After a few hours though, you might find they do, do sort of get a little bit warm, but um, you know, your mileage may vary. The microphone is a six millimeter cardioid microphone, which is undirectional. So you can flip that microphone down and then you can sort of pull it out and bend it around so that is in sort of line with your mouth. But then if you want to mute the microphone or if you've got your own maybe standard USB dedicated microphone that you're gonna use instead, you can actually flip that microphone up and it's almost completely hidden. So there's some of the technical specifications. Now the weight, um, they're 349 grams, which is definitely, I guess, the heaviest pair of headphones that I've actually used. But considering you're getting RGB lighting, a um, rechargeable battery, 7.1 surround sound, 50 millimeter drivers, a built-in microphone, it's kind of hard to make it any lighter without sacrificing the battery size, which is then gonna make the battery life too short. So, I mean, maybe future generations, maybe the next models will have better battery life and slightly lighter. Um, maybe they could have used different ear cups, like the old G Pros, which I'm a big fan of. Um, so 350 grams is definitely going to, for some people, be a bit of a, I guess, a concern, and you're only gonna really know how it's gonna feel until you put them on. They are somewhat comfortable. It's kind of a weird thing because I found them comfortable for maybe half an hour, an hour, but then after an hour, I start to get a bit fidgety and I start to move them around to try and find a new comfortable position. So it's hard to say whether or not I would recommend them for someone who's going to be gaming for a long time. Um, but again, your mileage may vary. You probably just got to go out and give them a try. The sound quality is the biggest thing for these headphones that I have to say is absolutely amazing. The sound quality, the 7.1 surround sound, which is featuring the, uh, I think it's DTX 2.0. Um, and then you can use the software in Logitech G Hub to customize the EQ and the sound profile. But the 7.1, in my opinion, like the G432s, which I reviewed, you can actually check that out. I'll leave a link just up in the corner there. The 7.1 surround sound makes an absolutely just like, it's like a game changer. I was playing some COD, some Modern Warfare, some Apex Legends, and I was able to hear the enemies sneak up behind me or come through a door or come through from a different direction. And it almost made it feel like I could 
tell where they were coming from and pre pre aim um, knowing they were going to be sort of running towards me to try and take me out. So the 7.1 surround sound for gaming is absolutely a game changer in my opinion and I don't think I'll be um, not using 7 point surround sound anytime in the future. The other cool thing is that it works with movies. So if you've got movies that have surround sound built into them, um, you know, you can actually have these headphones on for quite an enjoyable um, movie or entertainment experience. So if you're just consuming content, these headphones are great for that as well. Now, the microphone, as you'll hear in the microphone test, I wasn't too impressed with the microphone. It was, I guess for this price point, just a little bit underwhelming. There wasn't much body. It wasn't very full. The sound didn't feel like there was any attention to the lows, mids or highs. It was just all one tone. It sounded very much like I was um, on a cheaper headset. And so compared to my Logitech G Pros, which I was using for a long time, um, which had an awesome microphone, I guess I was expecting that same sort of standard at this particular price point. These are like their flagship headphone. So to have a microphone that was performing not that well, like the G432s um, was quite disappointing really. So I'm gonna stick to using my built-in USB microphone. If you wanna know more about that, I'll leave a link down below. But sound quality, absolutely awesome. Microphone, a bit disappointing. Now, the other cool things about this particular headphone, if you want to go old school, you can just go ahead and plug in the 3.5 millimeter audio cable to your console or your PC. Um, they do work, I guess, cross platform, so you don't have to worry about if you're using them on a PC or a Mac or an Xbox or a PlayStation or a Switch or a mobile phone, they will work. Um, but obviously, if you don't have a USB point for the receiver, you need to go ahead and use that 3.5 millimeter audio cable, which, I mean, if the battery goes flat, it's there for you anyway. So that's kind of a good backup to have. The recharging, um, you can recharge these headphones quite quickly. It takes about, from my testing, about an hour to recharge them from zero to 100%, which is great. But you can also recharge them and use them wireless um, at the same time. So, you know, you don't have to worry about switching them off uh, when you're not using the headphones to recharge them. You can recharge and game at the exact same time, which is great. Now, the other sort of, let me just grab these. The other things that, I mean, they do include on the back of the headphones here are some little macro buttons which you can program to do different things like turn the surround sound on or off or maybe change your EQ profile. Um, you can program them to do whatever you want to do. They do have a microphone mute button here as well which is, I guess, handy but I mean you can easily just flip it up as well so, I mean, why not just do that and remove that button and maybe add another G button here. Um, the audio dial, they do have a little audio dial so you can control the volume from the back of the headphones and then you've got an on and off switch. Now, something I did notice is that when you're not using them and there's no audio coming from the PC or your console, they will go to sleep. So let me just put these back. They will go to sleep and save you the battery life, but it wasn't all the time. Sometimes I found that if you maybe had like a YouTube tab open, and there was no music playing, um, they would still sort of stay active and drain the battery life. So making sure to be mindful enough to turn off the headphones is, is really, really important. Otherwise you might come back and be like, oh yeah, they're fine. And then like what I find out is that they're actually flat and you had to top them up, but they didn't take long to recharge. So that's, that's a little um, minor win. So just something to note there. Now, did I use the G buttons on the back of the headphones? Not really, to be honest, because they were kind of hard to tell which one I was pressing. They do make them different angles to try and help you with the feeling, but maybe what they should have done is put like a little bump um, on the back of each button so that way you could actually feel and tell which one you're um, actually pressing. So maybe one bump for the first, two bumps for the second, three bumps for the th for the third, for example, that would have made it uh, maybe a little bit easier to use and would have maybe made me want to go back and actually use those buttons more often. But Quite often I was using the volume up and down on the keyboard and using you know, some macros on my keyboard to change certain settings just because I found it too hard to reach to the back of my head and get to those buttons. Um, now lastly, the RGB lighting. The RGB lighting is a talking point. Everyone's got their own thoughts and opinions on it. A lot of people love it, a lot of people hate it. But for these headphones, I don't really understand why. Um, I've got my own theories, but they've put the lighting at the back of the headphones. So 
you can't see it and if you're streaming your viewers they can't see it either so it doesn't provide anything in terms of like um for the viewer or for anyone that's around you the only thing i can think of is that if you are maybe gaming and someone is walking into the room behind you and they can see the lighting is on maybe that might i guess make them think like oh this person's playing a game they're hearing some sounds i'll you know come back later or i'll maybe you know be aware of that when i'm approaching them so that's all i have to say about the rgb lighting i think it's cool i like it my viewers don't see it i don't see it but i think it's a cool thing to have because when you're putting everything back down on your desk i'm kind of that person that likes to have my mouse and my peripherals my pc all sort of matching um so i think the fact that they've just chucked that in um i don't know how much it costs for them to do that but the fact they did i think is great and if you don't want it you can just turn it off so I mean, now it comes down to whether or not I think you should buy them. If you're going to want something wireless with surround sound and rechargeable and RGB, then these are like absolutely awesome headphones. If you're going to use them for competitive gaming, long gaming sessions and to talk with your friends and you know the other people that you might be playing games with um, or doing Skype calls or whatever it might be, the microphone is a bit of a letdown, I'm sorry. So it's kind of one of those things you have to weigh up is like, for me, I want wireless, I want seven points surround sound. I wasn't gonna use the microphone anyway and I wanted something that was comfortable with absolutely like uh, amazing comfort and features and something that I could use for a long, long time. And for me, that ticks all of those boxes. I have a wireless G Pro, uh, sorry, a wireless G Pro mouse, a wireless G613 mechanical keyboard, a wireless now headset, and I absolutely love having no cables. And then, you know, if you're that person, then definitely go out and pick these up or maybe ask for them for Christmas. So let me know what you think. Did this um, review help you? Did it persuade you to buy these headphones or not buy these headphones, let me know down in the comment section. Again, if you like this video, chuck it a like, get subscribed, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Cheers. G'day guys, so this is the audio test for the Logitech G935 headset and microphone. Everything that you're currently hearing right now is from this microphone, completely untouched and unmodified. In terms of the sound settings, so we'll just have a quick look at that. We can see the G935 is our default device. The audio levels are currently set to 100%. And then in the Logitech G Hub software, we've got the G935 here. And if you go to acoustics, we've got enable surround sound and noise removal turned on. Um, and then on the advanced section for the Windows sound properties, we've got it at one channel 16 bit 48,000 hertz, which is unfortunately as high as it goes. Um, to capture this whole clip and all of the video, we're using AMD Radeon Relive. The audio bit rate is 320 kilobits. And the actual webcam we're using to capture this video as well with Streamlabs is the Logitech Brio webcam, which is 1080p at 60 frames per second. So as you can see, I've got a lot of uh, Logitech peripherals, but today we're talking about the headset. The, I guess, um, other thing to mention is that it does have RGB, but even with this webcam, and if I turn it sort of side on so you can see the little logo here and spin around so you can see the lighting at the back, it's very hard to see. So I don't really understand why they've included it when no one can see it. Um, maybe for the person behind you or the other person in the room, maybe that's the only thing I can think of. Um, maybe it sells more having RGB, I don't know. So. Let me know though what you think of this microphone, whether or not you think it justifies the price that they're asking for this headset, or if you think they should have maybe just left it out altogether. So thanks for watching this video, guys. If you liked it and you found it helpful, hit the like button, get subscribed, and I'll see you in the next video.